56p a year, that's all the royal family costs us. Does that sound like value for money to you? Buckingham Palace accounts have revealed that the monarchy cost the taxpayer £35.7 million in the last year, which works out at 56 pence for each person in the country. And the figure is up a little bit on last year, but it costs a lot to look, you know, to keep those palaces in good nick, because we have big buildings. Do you mind paying that amount? It's less than a bar of chocolate and pretty much anything else that you can buy for a bidding machine. A pack of crisps, for example, costs more than that. Um, or do you resent paying whatever price it costs to keep the rolls? Earlier we spoke to Graham Smith, Chief Executive Officer of Republic, who, it may not surprise you, thinks that no amount is acceptable. I don't think he's a fan of the Queen. I see someone who is, has not worked for that position, hasn't been challenged, hasn't had to earn it. Uh, she simply sat there for more than 60 years. I don't think she's been sat there. Um, let's hear from Thomas Mace, Archer Mills, Chairman of the British Monarchist Society. Thomas, very good afternoon to you. Yes, good afternoon to you, Roberto. Thank you for having me today. Well, a pleasure. Welcome to the programme. Is 56 pence a year a reasonable price to pay? 56 pence, as you said, is not even a packet of crisps. I think the value for money is absolutely phenomenal for what we get as a nation. There's no greater flag waver for Britain in the international community than Her Majesty the Queen and her family. How, how I mean, can we quantify, Thomas, in financial terms, what it is they, they give the country? Do, I mean, do, they, do they have any added value? Added value. If, if we are to look simply in pounds and pence, the, the, the billions brought in just in tourism alone is enough to say they, own, they, they earn their own keep. But then if we take it a bit further and look at the employment, just how many people that the palaces actually employ, not just service-wise and cook-wise, but everything that comes along with it, the stewards, the royal collection keepers, the restoration people, the people that even run the tills. I mean, we're looking at the monarchy as a very big employer in otherwise impoverished parts of the country that do think, rely think, on... Thomas, I'm, not, I'm, a, I'm a great royalist, but I think they don't always pay the best wages, do they? Well, no, they don't. But then we, we also have to look and see what they are, in fact, given to live on themselves. And when we look at, let's say, OK, today in the paper, Queen given X amount of pounds. Well, that's not going into Her Majesty's purse. Our Queen does not make any paycheck at all for what she does for this country. She, she doesn't have a pay rise. The only thing that rises is what she's given to fulfil her role as head of state. I think, I think it's underestimated what they do around the world as well. I mean, I know it, it, it is difficult to quantify, but I had a guest last night, uh, Chris, Chris Barnard is, is an inventor, and uh, I know in the last year or so he has been uh, uh, out to China to sell a, a, a product he's uh, invented and he, he produces, company produces, and it was literally sold to China via the British Embassy, but what yeah. really sold the deal to the Chinese was the fact that Prince Andrew turned up at the yeah. embassy and said, by the way, these are our British products. Exactly. And we know Prince Andrew is a cultural and business attaché to the international community. Some people would say, oh, well, you know, maybe he's not the best, maybe he is. But the actual prominence and the gravitas that our country is given by the fact that Her Majesty and her family are out there pushing British band brands in the international community says a lot about our stature in the world. Can, would it be easier for some of the, 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 the uh, royalists, uh, mon the anti-monarchists, of course, the Republicans, if we had a list and we can tick off who, who would be worth more money of, of the royals? I mean, the Queen, definitely. Yeah, Prince Philip, definitely. Prince Charles, definitely. Prince Edward, yeah, not so much, really. Uh, Princess Anne, not really. Well, uh, well uh, I, Prince Edward, I might give you that one. Princess Anne, one of the hardest working people in the royal family. She's the Princess Royal, and that title doesn't come without a lot of work. But, of course, some people, very few, very few, are not fans. I mean, over some of the comments, Thomas, people are suggesting we should pay more for the Royal Family. 56p is too cheap. Well, to be honest with you, if we look from the late 80s, early 90s, where the Royal Palace, uh, Buckingham Palace, in fact, was, was at 80-plus million pounds to operate, and now, in 2014, we're looking at 36 I mean, the Queen is, is a very frugal woman. She's a cost cutter. And change starts from the top. And I often say to those people that want to criticise her, why are you not holding Westminster to account? Why are you not going off about the expenditure of Downing Street and then the Prime Minister's private retreat checkers? 
So if we were to add up what the Palace of Westminster costs and everything with Downing Street and compare it to Buckingham Palace, Let's, let's face it, we also, okay, politicians, yeah, great, what in fact do they do? We pay for them. When the Queen has worked her entire life, 63 almost years, unfledgingly for the people of Britain, we can't take that away from her. Do you think, Thomas, that other countries around the world, while they might have their own royal family, they might have a republic, of course, do, they, do you think they look upon Britain and think, with, with, a, with a touch of envy... Of course. Uh, no matter how hard they try to duplicate, they will never replicate. And, and this goes back years and years. Well, let, let's take Papua New Guinea, case in point. When they had, free, when I say freedom, when they gained their independence from Australia, who did they come to? They have a thousand different tribes, 800 different languages, couldn't find one person above the petty politics to lead their country. They came cap in hand to Her Majesty the Queen. Would you please sort us? Would you please make us one people? Would you please be our head of state? The only realm that was not hereditary. And when we go around the world and we look at envy, we see the United States. Number one, the biggest event in a president's life will be going to Buckingham Palace to meet Her Majesty the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh. Thomas. That is one of the top things they could ever start for in their presidency. Thomas, I once had dinner with the Queen of Holland. Not the same thing, let me tell you. Not the same <laughs> well, thing at all. No, no, it's definitely not, because around the world, it is the British monarchy that has always been present in the people's lives. And if we look at it, Roberto... She's not just our queen. She is the queen of 15 other nations as well. Now, that says something about the endurance of the British people. So it's a pleasure talking to you. I understand you've been at Wimbledon this afternoon. You weren't in the royal box, were you? Well, no, no. I, trust me, that, that's reserved. I, I don't make it that far, but, you know, that's, that, I know my place. That's all right. Thomas, <laughs> pleasure talking to you. Thomas Mace, Archer Mills, who's the chairman of the British Monarchy Society.